All right, so I need to give you guys some complex numbers stuff. So how many of you have never seen complex numbers at all? Oh, perfect. A squad. All right. I squad. All right, so I would like for you guys to notice that you can write a complex number, right, as a real piece and an imaginary piece. Is that foreign to anyone? Okay, so if I'm going to talk about a number that's in C, I'm going to call it Z for a second. So I'm saying Z is a number in C, and I'm going to write that as A plus B I. A is a number in R, B is also a number in R. Get all good with these? So for that, would C represent all complex numbers? Yeah, so C represents all the complex numbers, and all I'm saying is Z is one of these, and you can write it as A plus B I. Cool? So that means that I'm going to go what? I'm going to go left, or right or left in the, I'm just going to say X. Yeah, cool. Axis, and then up in the Y axis for the imaginary. Cool. You guys see that? Yeah. So I'm going to kind of start thinking at 0, 0. I'm going to go over A in the real direction and up B in the I direction. So that's going to get me to a dot here that normally I would write some parentheses and write like. Imaginary or complex. Complex point. Yeah, normally I'd just write this, right? I'd write A comma B. Oh, I was thinking if you wrote just a, that AB somewhere else, not on your labeled graph. Oh, yeah, if I, so if I wrote AB, I'd be thinking, I would really just write that as A plus BI. Okay. Just to drive home that that's exactly where I'm talking about it. It's in the complex numbers. It's not a real point. So instead of writing the A comma B, I'm going to write A plus BI. Cool. Sure, yeah, and we can think about these as two-dimensional factors, right? There's a real part and an imaginary part, and I think you can think about this as A times the vector 1 plus B times the vector I. Yep, and so really I'm kind of thinking about the number that ends there, right? If I'm thinking vector terms. I'm going to leave this on my picture just because the next thing I want to do is talk about polar. Okay, so in polar, right, there should be some radius, yeah, and some angle theta. Now, the, the really, really badass thing about complex numbers is you can write an A plus BI as R e to the I theta. I remember that from trig. You remember this from trig? Cool. So this is utilizing a fact that is magic. It's not actually magic, it's just magic for now. Okay? The magic for now is this thing called Euler's identity, which is that e to the i theta is shit. Give me a second. Is what? Something over R. Okay, so I'm going to multiply it by R here. Oh, so if you pretend R is 1, then this should be that, right? Which means that A has to be the adjacent side, right? So maybe this thing is like cosine of theta plus. Close. There's a sine theta in there. I sine theta. Plus I sine theta. Let's call that. Don't be. This is magic right now. There's no reason right now for this to be true. This is just crazy talk. The promise it's true, and the reason it's true is extremely cool. Like, stupid cool. But it's a little far afield. So when we get to, do you guys want a flavor of where it comes from? Yes. <laughs> okay, so the flavor of where it comes from 
is this is a regular function, right? E of the x. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is a regular function sine of x, right? And this is a regular function cosine of x. Okay, so no, no, we're gonna do something weird in Calc two. We're gonna start writing these as polynomials. So when we write these as polynomials, we're gonna write e of the x is like one plus x plus x over two factorial plus x over oops x squared over two factorial plus x cubed over three factorial plus and kind of so on. Okay. So we're gonna make we're gonna think e to the x is a polynomial. We're gonna come up with this kind of thing that doesn't end but looks vaguely like a polynomial. You guys see that? Okay. E to the x is constant. Yeah. yeah, e to the x isn't a polynomial. Yeah. Right? But we're gonna come up with some kind of approximation that it takes some machinery to build. And then we're gonna do the same thing for sine and cosine. So when we build it for sine, we're going to get x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial minus x to the 7th over 7 factorial, and kind of so forth. I saw that on Wikipedia. Yeah. So these are what's called Taylor polynomials. And then for cosine, we're going to build the same thing, and we're going to get 1 plus x squared over 2 factorial, 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial, and kind of so forth. And notice that this one looks like the odd ones out of here, and this one looks like the even ones, and they alternate in sign, right? If you plug i theta into these two and this one, you'll notice that they're the same. So that's kind of where this comes from. This comes from a super cool, like, OK, we built these three things, and then, oh, wow, it looks like if you put these two together, you get that one. So you just combine it. And so you kind of do, and you get this one nifty statement. Cool? Okay, so the things I want you to know are this. You can get the r and the theta, right? With the usual conversions. You guys see that? Okay. I want you to know this thing. This is Euler's identity. Or Euler's formula, depending on who you ask. Cool. And then there's one more kind of magic thing, which comes out of Euler's, which is this thing called De Moivre's. Am I saying that right? Okay, I'm probably not spelling it right, but whatever. Okay, and De Moivre's is made by taking this thing, right? Euler's identity, mm -hmm. and noticing something cool which is that if you take e to the i theta and raise it to the nth power, right? That's the same thing as taking, oops, as taking what? Cosine, cosine, and the theta. Yeah, that's the same thing as taking cosine theta plus i sine theta and taking all of that crap to the nth power. Is with me on that? Okay, but it's also R e to the i theta equals R cosine. Oh, e i theta times. Good. From exponent rules, right? This is the same thing as e to the i times n theta. You guys remember that exponent rule? Okay, and that means that I can plug n theta into Euler's, right? And get cosine of n theta 
plus i sine of n theta. That's cool, that. Huh? And if you want to know what sine of m theta is, or what cosine of m theta is, you can foil this thing out. It's going to be a little worse than foiling, right? There might be like 27 of them. <laughs> and then you can gather up the real parts. The real parts are going to have to be the cosine of m theta. And you can gather up the imaginary parts. Those will be the sine of m theta. That's cool of us? All right. Questions, concerns, deals on complex numbers? This is just a really brief review. I'm trusting you guys have seen some of this. What does this whole thing rest on? What's the like fundamental fact about complex numbers that I forgot at the beginning here? Okay. Fundamentally, the thing you need to know is that i squared is negative 1, and otherwise things work like usual. Remember to FOIL. Cool.